Coach, obviously, uh, you know, you talk about, obviously, it doesn't matter how you get the wins, getting the win is what's the most important thing. Uh, just maybe take me through that fourth quarter where, you know, they made a run, you brought Devin back in, he made a run, and then it came down to the last last seconds. I mean, just maybe take us through that from, from, from your vantage point. Well, I mean, I, they're, they're playing much better. I don't think they get enough credit. Um, the coaches got some players that play the way he wants to play. Um, you know, I can sit here and talk about some of the mistakes that we made in execution and turning the ball over um, in key moments. Um, but I thought Book uh, had big time poise tonight, whether it was in isolation or knocking down threes, like th those wasn't just the shot, it was the way he uh, got to his spot or came off of screens uh, to get a shot. And that, that really helped us. Um, our second unit uh, was, was a bit off tonight um, and that happens. And our starters came back in and, and closed it out. And that, that's, you know, that's how it is sometimes. You gotta win a game. Um, it wasn't as pretty as you would like it to be, but at the end of the day, we beat a team that's playing a lot better on the road, and it's a big win for us. Quick follow, um, Aiden, the response after the last game and what he was able to do. What do you think of his performance? He's just dominated in the paint. You know, that's uh, the way that he can play. Um, we were a bit, <clears throat> um, we were trying to go to him tonight. We were intentional about it. Um, even out of timeouts, we felt like we had some opportunities to exploit his ability to use his physicality in the paint and, and he executed. Um, not only that, he had a few rim runs tonight that freed up guys for threes. And uh, defensively, I thought he was, he was pretty good um, on the ball. He had a couple fouls that were, you know, physical fouls, but I thought he had a, a pretty dominant night scoring the ball and then he, he rebounded um, not as well as he normally does, but he still had 11 and um, he was just really good tonight. I thought his poise was, was at a high level when he got the ball in the post. He didn't rush, he got to his spots, he was shooting his jump hook. There's a couple of times where he faded, where I felt like he could have used his physicality and got closer to the basket. But overall, I thought he was pretty good in the paint. Next up, we have Kellen Olson with the Arizona Sports. He'll be followed by Cody Cunningham. Hey, Monty, to go back to DeAndre's poise, when he was catching the ball against Wood, specifically in the third quarter, it looked like he had the confidence where he knew he, he could score on him. What have you seen from him this season in terms of just improvement and really just believing himself in, the, in those situations and, and understanding the skill and talent and power and all that combination of uh, attributes that he has in that position? Well, I mean, <clears throat> he's just a, a force down there when – he wants to be, and I think he feeds off of the confidence we give him. I think when we go to him down there or the guys are telling him to seal uh, or post up, I think that gives him confidence. Um, he, he's one of the few guys in the league that generates offense for us uh, by diving and rim running. Tonight he generated it for us in a different way, and I think that's the dimensions that he has in his game um, on the offensive side of the ball. And it, it's it's been a... Um, a process uh, with him. I don't think he understands how big and strong he is and how much he can use it to his advantage. And I think, you know, putting him in those situations and, and having success can build confidence for him. But I don't think he really knows how dominant he can be in the paint. All right, next up, we have Cody Cunningham with Suns.com. He'll be followed by Criso Saltis. Hey, Monty. Uh, tonight, Chris joined Magic, Stockton, Nash, and Kidd as just the fifth player in NBA history with 500 games of double-digit assists. Um, just when you think about the consistency of what it takes to notch, you know, 10-plus assists in that many games, just what does that say about the way that Chris plays, you know, so consistently just night in and night out? Well, I think, one, you got to be available, and there's a level of toughness that – it takes to play in that many games and you can put up those kinds of numbers. Um, his work ethic off the floor, his diet, and then you couple that with his know-how of the game allows him to, to be in those positions. Um, 
you know, you could say a lot of guys have to make shots, but if you've been around Chris long enough, the way he plays the game, he, he's one of the best setup guys I've ever seen. And he understands, you know, where to get guys the ball, a lot like the guys you mentioned. Um, you know, I remember playing against Stockton and all of his passes were on time, on target, you know, Stockton to Malone, Stockton to Hornacek, those combinations are great, but it takes someone like Stockton to make all that stuff look good. And I think Chris, um, in the same vein, when you look at all the guys he's played with and being that consistent on different teams, says a lot about him and the way he studies the game and his durability. All right, we have time for two final questions. Next up, we have Chris Osaltis with Sports DNA in Greece, followed by Dwayne Rankin. Hello, coach. Congratulations on the win. How important for you about your mentality as a team is to win games like this? And what was the biggest takeover of tonight's game for you? Well, I mean, the biggest takeaway for, for me is we got the win. You know, that's that, that always builds confidence. Uh, I did not like that we gave up 70 points in the second half. You know, I, I talked to the guys about that. Um, we can be much better than them. Now, they hit some shots. I think they had 17 threes. Uh, made. Uh, the other thing was we put them on the free throw line. They averaged 23 free throws a game, I think, and they had 33 tonight. So they, they play with a level of desperation that we're going to see from teams. Um, we're not sneaking up on it, anybody anymore. And, um, you know, that's a credit to the guys in our locker room. They, they've, they put themselves in this position. So we know that we can play much better defensively than we played tonight, but my biggest takeaway is we, we came out with a win, and, and that's what you want to do every single night. Final question comes from Dwayne Rankin. Yeah, Coach, probably when you look at, you know, Aiden, Booker and Aiden's numbers, that's going to obviously jump out, but I thought Mikhail made so many plays um, tonight. Maybe just speak to how he impacted the game uh, in so many different ways tonight. Well, I mean, he, he's – Again, he's a lot like D.A. We don't call a ton of plays for McHale, and yet he just figures it out. Um, I thought the last dunk that he had kind of sums up McHale. You know, he just finds a way to affect uh, our team in a positive way. You know, he just got ahead of the defense and got a transition dunk. I think that was his last bucket. But he's improved his shooting uh, so much that he's a threat to shoot the ball and drive. He's not just a three and D guy. He can make plays off the bounce. And so I, <clears throat> he's grown so much um, in our program, but on his own, he's a diligent worker. Um, he's an intentional worker. And he's, he's starting to understand how he can be effective playing off of Chris and Book. So he's certainly a weapon for us. Yeah, Devin, obviously a close game and you guys have found a way to win it, win at the end. I just wanted to just first ask about, uh, you guys were down three, you come in the game, you scored 10 points in a minute and 11 seconds in our 10-0 run to get you guys back ahead. Can you just take me through the mindset you had once you came back in? Was it just, hey, I got to get it going right now? I mean, because that's what it looked like from, from, from afar. Uh, yeah, just taking what the defense gave me. Um, I think Chris did a good job of, you know, opening things up in transition. So I got a couple quick, easy threes. Um, and then just trying to win the game. You know, I always say take what the defense gives me. Um, and that, that was the goal tonight. But, you know, that was a hard fighting team over there. They fought beginning to end. You know, I think a couple times we had opportunities to put them away, but they didn't go anywhere. So, you know, we, we wanted to get this one back. A quick follow, um, obviously with this one out of the way, you know, the back-to-back -back is coming with Jazz and, and, and Clippers. Just looking at the standings, looking where you guys are with that, looking at the implications of those two games, just maybe speak to those challenges and how much, you know, being in that situation, having an opportunity to, to play for something uh, pretty important uh, at this point in the season right now. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, we want to win every game when we go out there. So, you know, obviously – you know, these are two top teams in the West that, you know, I'm sure that we'll see um, down the line at some point, maybe. So, you know, every every game counts. You know, I know we're going to be locked in. We're going to be ready. So, you know, it's exciting. All right, next up, we have Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports. He'll be followed by Chris Osaltis. 
Hey, Devin, you guys ran things through DeAndre for the most part of the middle two quarters. Uh, he was operating like he just had confidence. He knew he could score on wood. What, what's the dynamic for you guys like as an offense when you can switch it up from time to time, run things through DeAndre, and uh, you guys can have success like that? Uh, yeah, you know, he, he's a force down there. Um, and he, he can do it every night. Um, so if teams, you know, try to keep a bit smaller matchup on him, you know, more of a pick and pop guy, you know, like wood, then, you know, we have to exploit that, exploit that mismatch. Um, we were playing through him and, you know, he wasn't shying away from contact. He was going right through it, getting to the rim. I um, think he missed a couple ones early, um, but didn't get too hard on us. So kept playing through and, you know, it was a great bounce back within the game. All right, Book, final question comes from Chris Osaltis with Sports DNA in Greece. Hello, Devin. Congratulations on the win. How you love to have the ball in crunch time and how good is this team this season in crunch moment? You said our greatest moment? How, how good is this team in crunch, in crunch time this season? Uh, we're working on it. You know, I feel like that's an area um, that we've emphasized the past few weeks. Um, we've had some troubles in some games and still came out with wins, which is good, but we know we need to clean some things up. Um, and with the experience of being in situations like this, you know, I think that's the only learning tool for us. So, you know, we're going to keep keep trying to get better. Um, and that's on me and Chris, you know, to orchestrate um, down the stretch. And, you know, I think we can be, be really good. Hey, Chris, uh, talked before about end of game situations and, you know, the win is the most important thing. But uh, what's maybe what's eating at you about how the game ended? I know you, got, you guys got the win, but what's maybe bothering you about maybe the last – Three, four minutes. Uh, you know, we just had a couple of turnovers. They had some shots. Um, I mean, the good thing is that we win it, but we just gotta, you know, keep keep building, keep learning from this stuff, and hopefully get to where we, we put teams away and you know, it don't come down. Like that. And just a quick follow up. You told me before that you just sort of expect Devin to have games like this, but there was a 10-0 run that he had personally with you guys down three, and he came in and put you guys up seven. Uh, when you see that kind of burst, I know you've seen it, but is it still like after the game in the locker room, like how does he do that? Or how does he just flip it like that and, and, and get it going immediately? Uh, I didn't know he did that. I think when you're in it, you just expect it. You know what I mean? It don't surprise you. Not me, <laughs> not me. I, I know, you know, what, what you're supposed to do. And when you're a leader and you, you know, the elite or the elite in this league, that's expected of you. So he probably didn't even know it. Next question comes from Kellen Olson with the Arizona Sports. He'll be followed by Gina Mizell. Hey, Chris, DeAndre was scoring really confidently tonight. I was curious with just how you've been working with him and, and trying to keep that more consistent with him and, and just his mindset and just his approach. It, it looked like he really knew he was going to score on Wooden and really tried to go at him tonight. Uh, just, just staying, of course, with him, letting him know. Um, you know, it's funny on, on a team with somebody like myself and Book, you know, I think sometimes, um, you know, maybe he gets overlooked or whatnot, but we always just try to remind him how important he is to our team. You know, when he plays that way with that energy, yeah, being able to go inside and outside, mixing and picking roles and to punish teams when they try to switch. I think that's uh that's big for our team going forward. Next up we have Gina Mizell with Suns.com, followed by Criso Saltis. Hey Chris, to go back to the the crunch time and the, the close games that you guys have been playing in lately, just over the course maybe of the past couple of weeks, like where do you feel like you guys have made the most strides in those types of moments? And then maybe what are you still hoping specifically? It's like, okay, this is kind of the next thing that we have to clean up in those types of moments. Um, we, uh, you know, we got, a, we got a deep playbook, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of sets sometimes that, you know, we may go a game without running. And, you know, we ran play down the stretch tonight that we hadn't ran in a while. So. I think for us, uh, we just want to keep building and see what works. Everything's always going to change from game to game, depending on what the matchups are. So I think we're fine. All right, next up is Criso Saltis 
with Sports DNA in Greece. He'll be followed by Dwayne Rankin for our final two questions. Hello, Chris. Congratulations on the win. How, for a, such a competitive guy like you, how refreshing and what it means to have so gifted uh, teammates like D Book, Mike uh, Bridges, De uh, DeAndre Ayton? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. I heard the guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how important is it to have teammates like this? Oh, it's very important. I think the way our team is constructed uh, is very well. Um, you know, we, we got defenders, we got selfish guys, we got scoring, you know, we got all the different things that you need, and we just got to keep building. Um, you know, everybody's always going to say we don't have much playoff experience on our team, but who cares? <laughs> I mean, you got to play the game. At some point, you got you to get your feet wet, you got to go out there and hoop. So I'm, I'm not worried about any of that. You know, I think, you know, we got 20 some games left. Um, that's not that many in the grand scheme of things. So, uh, we just want to make sure we got the right habits going into the playoffs. Right, Chris, final question comes from Dwayne Rankin. Chris, I know this year you you talked about building and and, and and piling up wins. When you look at these next two games against teams that you talk about postseason, these are two postseason teams as well. And and just the growth that can be gained from this kind of moment of having a back to back against the the, the, the Jazz and the Clippers. What can be Obviously, they want to win, but what can be gained the most of, about having that kind of situation? Just approach the game the right way. Um, I hate to say this, but I don't take too much into it, you know, win or lose. You know, when you play these games, you don't know if a team coming off four and five, you don't know if a guy's sitting, resting, and whatnot. I think everybody uh, has the same mindset, though. You know, it's the next game on our schedule. We're going to go out and compete, play our way to, uh, to win the game. That's all that matters is win, win that game on, on, on Wednesday and not nothing.